The information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. This is not medical advice. If you're watching this video, there's probably a very good chance you're already using omega-3 supplements, either fish oil or krill oil. But today I'm here to look at a novel solution or alternative to these types of omega-3 supplements that may have some added benefits beyond either fish oil or krill oil. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and my mission is to bring you the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please like this video, smash subscribe below and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. So ultimately in today's discussion, we're gonna have a look at a alternative to the standard omega-3 supplements that you see on the market, either fish oil or krill oil. And I'm not someone who's against the use of these supplements. I've personally benefited from them in the past. And I'm also someone who encourages the consumption of seafood. I personally consume seafood two to three times a week. But this video is going to look at a different type of omega-3. What I'm gonna look at is specifically its unique benefits beyond the standard omega-3 supplements. So first of all, let's have a look at the basic functions of omega-3 fatty acids. From a sports performance perspective or athletic performance, we can see that omega-3 fatty acids can help with neuromuscular function, they can improve one's immune function, they can modulate oxidative stress, they can affect exercise-induced bronchitis or lung issues, they can help with traumatic brain injury, and they can also help with muscle function as well. You can see here the predominant effect of omega-3s in the brain and the vascular system or the vasculature network. We can see that omega-3s can powerfully affect neuronal health, and we can see that the phospholipids or the neuronal cell membrane is actually made up of DHA. So we know that infant exposure to omega-3s can significantly improve brain development. And it's also important to stave off cognitive decline as humans age. In addition, we know that omega-3s can, ins can improve uh, blood vessel tone and endothelial function. And that is because the endothelial cell membrane is actually made up of EPA. Here are some other functions of omega-3s. We know that omega-3s can actually affect the gut and specifically affect certain gut bacteria and microbes. So in a state characterized by dysbiosis, which causes weight gain, insulin resistance, and can even cause major digestive discomfort, there's an imbalance between these firmicutes and um, Bacteriodetes, which you can see here, these Firmicutes class, we can see how the specific balance is, is altered. And with supplementation of EPA and DHA, we can see that it restores eubiosis, which is the right balance of these Firmicutes, an increase in bifidobacteria and a decrease in enterobacteria. We also see an increase in, in uh, lacnospirochae, which is a beneficial bacteria, which increases short chain fatty acids and also suppresses endotoxins. And this is part of which how it improves or has an anti-inflammatory action. So here's the omega-3 alternative. What we're looking at is something called steridonic acid or steridonic acid. So steridonic acid or st steridonic, I'm probably butchering that. You can see the diagram in which steridonic acid is created. So it starts with the beginning substrate alpha linoleic acid, which is ALA that gets converted into this steridonic acid, which is the precursor to ETA and then eventually EPA and then DPA and then down to DHA. So this study was titled plant-based steridonic acid as a sustainable source of omega-3 fatty acid with functional outcomes on human health. Having a look at the steridonic acid facts, like alpha-lipoic acid, SDA or steridonic is a shorter long-chain omega-3 fatty acid composed of 18 carbons, making it a precursor to longer-chain fatty acids such as EPA and DHA. 
Unlike ALA, SDA has four double bonds and Considered an omega-3 fatty acid, SDA is emerging as an alternative non-fish source of omega-3s for at least two main reasons. While ALA-rich foods are often recommended as an additional or alternative source of omega-3s for those who don't or can't consume fish, most dietitians and most nutritional experts know that the conversion of ALA to the longer form, longer chain fatty acids is very inefficient. The conversion rate is appalling. That is why these plant-based foods are often a poor source of omega-3s because the conversion of ALA to uh, EPA and DHA is poor. Specifically, it's estimated that anywhere from less than 5% to 21% of ALA gets converted into EPA, while less than one to 9% of ALA gets converted into DHA. So stearidonic acid, if we have a look at the food sources, fortunately, a limited number of foods contain a small amounts of SDA, including some seed oils such as hemp, and the most important one here today, which is eschium or etchium oil. To date, the American diet contains such low amounts of SDA that it, it hasn't even been measured. So you can see here the oil content of major SDA rich plants, etchium or etchium oil, plantagenium. And then we also have ribus nigrum, which is blackcurrant, cannabis sativa, which is hemp. You, you guys will be familiar with that one. And then a couple of others as well. So really the best sources are um, etchium oil, which I'm going to explore very shortly. Steridonic acid, an interesting area of research I wanted to highlight. The study was titled Steridonic Acid, Is There a Role in the Prevention of Management of Type 2 Diabetes? Now, this study is really exciting because it looks at how steridonic acid may play a role in preventing and managing many of the symptoms associated with type 2 diabetes. So the question is, who can benefit from steridonic acid? Well, theoretically, the same individuals who rely on ALA-containing foods to increase their omega-3 intake may benefit from adding steridonic acid to their diet. So really, those that can benefit from steridonic acid include vegetarians, vegans, and anyone else who consumes little to no fish or people that have a, a seafood allergy. Ultimately, this omega-3 source has some extended benefits beyond you know, these ALA containing foods. And we know that there's now an ability to, you know, consume steridonic acid in supplemental form. Unfortunately, the food sources are very limited. You'll see a link to steridonic acid, a capsule form down below in the video description. It's called ahi flower oil, which is a plant source of omega-3 fatty acids, alpha linoleic acid, and steridonic acid and omega-6 GLA. This presence of SDA in this particular um, oil makes it distinct from something like flaxseed oil. And uh, a human clinical trial showed that this particular type of oil, this ahi flower oil, has up to four times more efficient conversion to EPA than flaxseed oil itself. So you'll see a link to steridonic acid down below. And really this video is not to discourage from consuming fish if you already consume seafood. This video was really to help people who are either vegetarian or vegan or people who struggle to consume fish that need to boost their omega-3 status. This is a solution and a strategy that can help to do that. So really my stance has always been to aim to get the most amount of nutrients we can from our diet, but in certain scenarios, certain diets, this is just not possible. Hopefully you learned something new. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.